In this simple object-oriented program, we start by looking at the class diagram here. Remember that it's divided into three parts. The top part of the diagram gives us the name of the class. The, the middle section gives us the name of the properties or attributes of each object associated with this class. Now for us in Visual Basic, in the class diagram, we would act, the class file, sorry, we would actually declare each of these three properties with the public access modifier. Earlier on in the class, we would have also paired up with each of these three attributes or properties a separate private member variable. The public properties here are what we're going to be able to access in sub-main, for example, in the main program. But behind the scenes, the data that we send or retrieve to or from that object is actually sitting in the private member variables, all hidden. Now this is the idea of encapsulation at work. The third section are the methods. Now these are going to be public as well. And here I've just got one method that's going to retrieve all the data for an object for these three uh, properties. A reminder that the method is either a sub, as in this case, or it could be a function. In this example, we don't have any parameters, but we could have, pass in some parameters if we choose. Now, an example of the program running is here. What I've got, first of all, is this is all written in sub-main, separate to the class file called employee. Now, first of all, I've created an object called worker. This is one object for one person, one worker. I've assigned an ID number, noticing here that this particular ID number begins with a, with a zero, and it's retained here. That's because the data type of employee ID was a string. If I'd made it an integer, when I redisplayed this value, the zero would have been dropped. The leading zero, that is. Next, the date, because I've used a convert to date function in my class um, to take in whatever the user typed, and then I'm outputting that there. Noticing that date here, actually for the day, has removed the leading zero, but for the month, which is partway through this date, it keeps the leading zero of that month. And then finally, I put in faculty coordinator as the title of that person's job. The next thing in submain are these three sections here. We're in a loop. I've created an array called staff. In that array, I first of all, I assign the data type of that array to employee, the name of the class. But in that line, I didn't create a, didn't use the constructor. The keyword new has not been used at all. So dim staff two as employee. Then in the loop, a for loop, for i as integer equals zero to the u bound of the array called staff. First thing I do is go staff i equals new employee. So first of all, we create an array that can store employee objects, but then we actually have to initialize each element in that array to be able to accept data for individual objects, the data being the ID, the date of birth, and the job of each employee. Obviously here, I've then asked um, within that loop uh, for us to input the data, and then the last section here, these nine lines presented here, are as a result of, in a second loop, a uh, for loop that is, I actually called upon staff i dot display employee data sub or method that was written in the class. In the class itself, the employee class, I've actually just said, well, console dot write line um, output the um, employee ID, then output the date of birth, then output the job title. Obviously that in sub-main 
is being called three times, one for each object that we've got in our array of three workers. So what I want you to do is see if you can actually replicate this program. Your data may be slightly different, that's okay, but the general idea is there. You've got a class called employee that follows the class diagram of creating three private member variables corresponding to three public properties or attributes that are with get and set tagged to those private member variables and then the public sub display employee data in order to get this last output here. Then in sub main, first of all you create a variable that is an object of the employee class. You assign some data to it and then you call the display employee data for that one object. Secondly, you create an array with an upper bound of two to be able to store three other employees, three other objects. Within the first loop, you initialize each element in the array to be an object with the keyword new, that constructor method in VB. We then ask the user to enter the data and then in a separate loop, we actually display the data stored in each object of our array which is down here. Give it a go and see what you come up with.